So I, um, I still remember boarding that plane uh, at Heathrow. Uh, this was September uh, 1991. I had just turned 16, and I was about to take the right flight to uh, Hong Kong, China. Uh, born and raised in Porto, um, I found in that community uh, uh, my roots, and, uh, and it, it helped me keep me grounded. Um, so my family had just, at the time, um, uh, embraced a new professional challenge, and we were about to move to Macau. Um, and uh, back then, the Far East was really far, right? Uh, uh, this was pre-internet and, uh, and uh, new culture, new language, uh, new people. I found it uh, fascinating. And uh, years later, I realized that this one uh, decision would, would change uh, the course of my life. So the two following years, I, uh, I took the freedom uh, to actually embrace some of the things that I could, uh, could do over there. So one of the, some of the lessons that I learned were, uh, although I was you know, very passionate uh, about my, uh, my, uh, my hometown and my culture and my country, it did not define me. I also took upon doing a couple of other things, right? So I started practicing Tai Chi with the elders and, uh, in the city gardens in Macau. That was pretty cool. Uh, I also started uh, doing photography. I, um, I learned how to cook. And I traveled extensively throughout, uh, throughout uh, Asia. So I got to see uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Thailand before all the plastic. Uh, I got to see mainland China, the Great Wall. Um, and, and I even ended up spending uh, Christmas in Kathmandu. Um, Nepal. But th the most important thing that I took from that uh, particular moment in time was the fact that I um, um, uh, still keep the friendships that I built uh, across the years and the distance. And, and most of all, um, there were some possibility seeds that were sort of planted back then that, uh, you know, showed me that there are many paths in life and that, uh, you know, uh, other perspectives matter. Um, so, uh, uh, coming back to Europe, sort of like, uh, 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 I felt like coming from, back from another planet, so like a bumpy, bumpy uh, uh, ride. I didn't really know what I, uh, what I wanted to, to study. Um, I had a, this palpable uh, sense of, uh, of, of confusion. I love photography, it was my passion, but I wondered if it was my future. I felt like I was an entrepreneur, um, uh, you know, a very young business builder, so should I embrace that? So I ended up doing my undergrad in, in, um, in Portugal and actually starting to work in my first gig in Lisbon. And soon after that, the company that I was working for invited me to uh, come over to Madrid. So that was the first time I came to this beautiful city. Um, and I stayed for a couple of years, and then uh, they asked me again, uh, do you, you want to come to the headquarters of the company in Paris, France? And I said, well, why not? Let's do it. So at, uh, at the verge of turning 30, I went, um, I went to... Uh, I went to live in, in Paris, France. Um, I was having a good time uh, living uh, La Vie à Paris, uh, but I, in the back of my uh, the back of my mind, I was uh, I was always thinking, you know, I want to continue learning. I don't want to stop. I want to enhance my skills. I want to embrace uh, new opportunities. So I started looking into actually doing my MBA. So I looked to several schools. I ended up doing my MBA right here in Madrid at IE. Um, and for me, the experience of an MBA is not completed without the international exposure, without an exchange, or without a hands-on project. And, um, and I was for fortunate enough to finish my MBA at, a, at a USD in, uh, in San Diego. And, uh, and that period of my, uh, of my life uh, was, uh, was uh, transformational. So um, if I could tell a lot of... Uh, of uh, I could tell a lot of the stories and the memories, the good memories that I have from, from my days in, in Southern California, but probably what stuck with me was the Thanksgiving House project by Professor Withers, Barbara Withers. So um, th there was this awesome group of students uh, who collectively would select the home um, uh, from the local community, rally the troops, f do the fundraising, and do the actual work to improve uh, uh, a home for someone in need, right? And we did this, under, uh, in a period of 12 weeks. So um, that was awesome. I mean, I, I noticed that you can serve your local community uh, and at the same time learn. You know, years later I realized this, this uh, um, um, uh, project-based learning is something that you actually perceive uh, uh, both uh, leadership and, and collaborative work and you're able to, uh, to learn from, from your peers. And, and it also uh, dawned on me that once you uh, learn as a user, as a doer, you do it passionately, not passively, right? So um, I came back from, uh, from, uh, from San Diego, back to Europe once again, uh, graduated, and started working at IKEA. 
so I, I helped build one of the first IKEAs in the north of, of, of Portugal. And it, it, it also, I, I kept going back to the time in San Diego because they're also builders. Um, they have design, they have the materials, um, they have, uh, you know, you know, some of us in this room, I'm sure, went to the joy and pain of assembly IKEA furniture. So, uh, so uh, um, I kept going into that and also realizing that some of the work that, uh, that uh, I did back then was very well connected to uh, the fact that we mixed knowledge and skills, right? And these two very important components uh, are becoming more and more uh, relevant these days. And why is that? Because um, we're, you know, uh, change, the world is changing through another a new layer of complexity, which is AI. Um, um, AI probably uh, brought you here in a very seamless way, helped you book your flights, get your hotels. Um, it's, it's really very accessible and, 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 and close to you. And in the work that I do today, I daily find uh, companies and even, you know, in, entire industries, energy, um, uh, healthcare, even education are being disrupted as we speak uh, through the power of AI, right? Um, so, um, so here's how I see um, uh, the future unfold. I think work will become uh, a service with labor and, talent, and talent becoming the new operating systems. Um, uh, the people, right, each one of us, not companies, will be expected to actually invest in our own development, constantly upgrading, demonstrating and presenting our skills portfolios. So um, I, find a tool, I found a tool, learning, right? Um, if, uh, if, uh, if you just pick a book, if you end up, you know, picking a course, doing a summer program, whatever, a book camp, just go out there and learn. Um, it's, it's like riding a bicycle, you know, don't let it sit in the garage and, and collect dust. Because uh, um, what you'll see is that um, retooling, reskilling, and uh, lifelong learning are becoming critical aspects of our, of our daily lives. Um, and uh, uh, the most important thing that I find is that if you're constantly learning and, f and, uh, and, uh, and uh, actually realizing that uh, in terms of what you do in your life, what you do in your careers will help you not become obsolete. So if I can do one thing is that I encourage you to uh, nurture uh, uh, the, your creativity, remain engaged and never stop learning. Thank you.